I am joined now by two of those leaders of tomorrow, Carly Krasnopol, APAC Senior National Field Organizer, and Landon Coles, an APAC trained student activist, and we might say superstar su student <laughs> activist. Absolutely, we would and say that. I, I, you know, that's what I've been told about you. And, but you know, you're no slouch yourself. You were an undergrad, you started with APAC, mm -hmm. and then once you graduated, you said, no, I'm staying with APAC. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me about that. What made you decide? Yeah, I mean, I think in college, you know, I think in college it's really important to have mentorship, and that's something that we all really crave. We want people to make us feel like we are worth being invested in because we care about so many things and we're passionate and we're driven. And I mean, I know Landon's the same way, so intrinsically motivated. And so to find someone who sees that quality, sees all of those qualities in you and says, I want to help you grow, period. Whatever you want, like in whatever area excites you and right. so on. And um, Because they're particularly malleable in terms of, because they're, you're, you want, you care about so many issues and you're enthusiastic. So yeah. you easily uh, mold them, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so when APAC found me, my sophomore year of college, I, I really jumped right in. I mean, I went to my first Saban leadership seminar, fell in love, was an intern that summer, and the field organizer who came before me, who now uh, works in our Phoenix office, actually still in the APAC family, was just my absolute greatest mentor, one of the most incredible human beings, and gave me more than I could have ever expected in a mentor. At what point did you decide, I'm staying here after college, I'm I joining APAC? The minute I finished my internship. I interned in leadership development, which is the department I'm in now, and I was going into my junior year, and I remember being so nervous that I was going to become irrelevant. I was like, I interned so early, and I know this is where I want to be, and my fuel organizer just did everything to give me every opportunity and to make me continuously feel welcomed and wanted to be on this team. So you, what do you look for in a future leader? And relate it to this quote unquote superstar over yeah. there. So I think intrinsically, someone being intrinsically motivated is incredibly important in a future leader. Having that drive and that passion for whatever that motivator is, but having that is really important. Something that you, I don't think you can really teach. Um, and I think the other thing that I look for is really open-mindedness. And I really think about this when I think of Landon. I mean, Landon is somebody who loves to learn how people see the world and let that impact how he sees the world. And I love that quality. Did you immediately leader. take to APEC? Immediately. And I took to it for several reasons. The family and the foundation that I found here in APAC, people like Carly who have continuously supported me and who pushed me to be the best me that I can be. But then even more so too, the educational aspect of it, being my best self, becoming better each and every single day through conferences like this that push students to the brink, getting uncomfortable and diving deep into conversations. Those are all things that immediately attracted me and, and just kept me coming back for every student conference that I participated in. And you are not just very enthusiastic, Fantastic. You you perform because tell me about yes. tell me about your numbers. Yes. That you told me. Yes. Let's talk about these numbers. So last year, <laughs> with several of our student-led conferences, I was the only black student to represent the University of Miami at several of them. This year, we have 10 students here at Policy Conference, 10 black students, and I recruited all of them. And so to see them here, to see them learning and to see their appetite for knowledge and to see them going around asking questions and challenging the narrative and getting uncomfortable. And how did you, it. how did you, it's your community. Mm -hmm. What did you say to say, let's talk about Israel when yes. there are so many other issues. Yes, and, and see, particularly as a black person, it's so hard, it's a, it's a unique challenge with my type of outreach because so many black students ask me, well, why should we come to stuff like this when we have our own grocery list of issues within our own respective communities? And I say, you should come for three reasons. For one, coalition building. It matters when marginalized communities stand together because there is strength in numbers and that matters when it comes to advocacy. For two, we have a responsibility to be educated. As students who are going to inherit the future, it is our job to shape it with knowledge and with proper discourse and pushing and furthering the discussions instead of taking them backward. And then finally for three, 
if you don't sit at the leadership table, somebody else will. APAC values self-development for our students, and it's important that you come to these conferences so you can build your network, build your family, build yourself, and push your own narrative forward. And what did going to Israel do for you? Israel changed my entire life. How I moved, how I talk, how I walk, it changed everything for me. I was baptized in the River Jordan. I was able to go on this religious journey with my Jewish brothers and sisters and learn of the three major Abrahamic religions. I was able to immerse myself in the politics, the, the social, the economic, uh, the, the culture of Israel. And it all has just truly transformed how I see the world and recognizing that we are so much bigger than just America, that there are so many issues out there that we have to tackle. But again, we must do it by standing together. I guess you recognize talent. <laughs> how could you? I was going to say the, how could the you trip it? worked, right? <laughs> uh, I feel like saying, I'll follow. <laughs> Am I told to join right. the delegation? <laughs> now, does, does everyone have this level? Like, how do you, I, you try to keep their enthusiasm up? Is that yes. part of your, your yes, most definitely. as a student? Everything, it, for me, I'm a firm believer, and I was always taught that everything is what you bring to it, the attitude that you put into it. My great-grandmother always has this saying. She says, you have to pray with your feet. Praying with your feet means walking into your destiny, walking into what it is you claim. For me, I claim that I want to be educated. I claim that I care, and I have to walk in that. And I walk in that by being in these spaces, consistently showing up, being present, and supporting the communities that need my support and need my voice. So do you come up with ideas or students uh, told what they should do to attract people? So I would say it's really a combination. I think that and I definitely have this relationship with Landon, but I think this is the relationship that I have with most of my students is we have the ability to be each other's thought partners in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And every semester we introduce initiatives to our campuses that are always very broad stroke. That way they can kind of mold it to fit their campus because nobody knows a campus better than the students who go there. Mm -hmm. And they know how to define success for themselves. So under these broad goals, I have, I'm very lucky that I have incredible students like Landon where he is a thought partner and we can have these conversations, but, and I, I don't want to switch subjects, but he did have an incredible round table in the fall that was fully his idea, fully that he, like, that he gets ownership of. And How I mean, did you handle the round table? I handled the round table and that I invited several student leaders from across campus in a lot of different spaces. I fanned out my network across the university and said, let's get everyone in the space, particularly black students. You mean other, other issues, leaders with other? Leaders are part of other student organizations on campus, particularly black students. Uh -huh. Let's get them in our Hillel so they can see what this community is like in this building, in this space. We sat down, it was about 15 of us, and we just dove in. We had a conversation about why APAC? Why are you here? Why, do, why should you be involved? And really just keeping them immersed and, and injecting energy into it. And once we had that round table discussion, that was what kept them coming to the conferences. At our African American student retreat some weeks ago, I led six students uh, to that conference and now here we are at policy and we have even more. Um, and so it was that round table that for me really served as a springboard and me and Carly volleyed back and forth on ideas, what I could add to the discussion. And we just really had candid conversations about the Palestinian narrative, the Jewish narrative, how does it tie into us? And, and just, again, being educated on the issues at hand so we can further those discussions. So have you lobbied already? Have you gone to Congress? And yes, yes, I have lobbied What was your first, first time, last year? Last year, yep. And, and it, it was quite, quite an experience. Um, to, be, to be in that, that was my first time actually ever being on Capitol Hill when we went to lobby last year. So that was in and of itself. You with him? Dream. <laughs> no, I wasn't, I wish. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. And for me, I want to run for Congress one day. So to be in that building, to be in that That is hall. so shocking, <laughs> let me tell you. Well, one of the right? things you can tell that we were waiting to go on and he said to me, because I, no, I love this, this is my family. I'm going to be on that stage one day. And, <laughs> and he will be. I, and, yeah, you believe it. I'm you praying with my question. feet. Praying with my feet. That's claiming right. it and walking in it. It's great. Well, <laughs> it, it is great to meet both of you. Yes, Thank you yes. so much Thank for you. being Thank with you. us.